Hi there, it's good to see you again and welcome to the Sally Tomato channel for our final segment in our mystery bag sew along tutorial series. The previous segment covered the interior of the project. Today, it's all about final assembly and a few fun details. Have you sewing sleuths figured those out? Gather the exterior, the interior, those last few fabric pieces and the last pieces of hardware, and let's head over to the sewing machine. Top stitch both long edges of all the main and contrast piece D. Those are the O-ring connectors with a narrow allowance. Just a quick tip, I'm just going to stitch from one connector to the next so I can smoothly continue all my little pieces top stitched, then I'll snip the threads in between. Then you'll thread each connector through one O-ring, fold each connector in half, wrong sides together, aligning the short ends and encasing the O-ring in the fold edge. I'm going to use Wonder Clips just to hold those ends together. Against the right side of each side panel, position one main fabric connector just out from the panel seams. The O-rings should be towards the bottom of the bag and allow about a half inch of the connector end, the raw ends, to extend above the panel. Position the remaining contrast fabric connectors on the front and back panels in from the side panel seams. So it should look similar to what I have here. And then you'll baste the connectors in place. And we can move on to some assembly. With right sides together, put the bag exterior inside the lining. You'll align the centers of the exterior front and back with the centers of the facing and match the side seam of the facing to the center of your accent stitching or the center of your side panels. Make sure the connectors and hardware are tucked safely down inside then use several sewing clips, I'm using quite a few, to hold all the layers in place. You'll sew along the top edge. You'll find a zipper foot very helpful, especially as you're going around the top of the bag and you're stitching a little closer to the hardware, which you can kind of feel through the layers. I'm using a very narrow foot, but a zipper foot will work really well. And then we're going to turn the bag right side out by gently pushing the fabric through the bottom unsewn edge of the zipper pocket. It'll take a little bit, but take your time. Then we're going to top stitch the turning opening that's the bottom edge of the pocket closed and stitch close to the fold edges. Now we can go back to the lining, gently shape the lining inside of the bag, smoothing it and make sure the connectors and O-rings are at the top. Then roll the seams and the corners with your fingers to flatten them. Top stitch around the top edge of the bag with a narrow allowance. Since I want to top stitch close to the side seam, but the bulk of the presser foot is actually in the way, I'm going to stitch just a stitch or two forward, and then I'm going to rotate or pivot my entire bag so I can stitch towards the side seam, and then I'll reverse stitch and pivot back and continue along the top edge of the bag. And one tip that I really recommend 
if you've used heavier fabrics, like I'm using the faux leather, the side panel seam allowances have more layers than all the other seams. So it's best to not try to top stitch over those side panel seams. Simply begin and end the top stitching a quarter inch or even three eighths inch away from the side panel seams. That way it looks like you've purposely designed your top stitching to stop and end perfectly. It'll just look so much better than trying to stitch over the seams there. And if you have lighter weight fabrics, fewer layers, you certainly can attempt to stitch over all that bulk. But I found it just looks really neat to stop and end the stitching before those side seam panels. This is where the side seam is really bulky, so I'm going to stop well before. That way it looks like I've planned that on purpose, which I have. Knowing that this is a very dense layer, lots of layers. And I'll do the same thing. I'll start further out. I'll rotate my work under the needle and then stitch a few stitches in reverse to get a little closer to this side seam area without causing any troubles. A finishing touch is to insert a small rivet or Chicago screws. I'm using a Chicago screw centered and just down from the top edge at each connector position. It's going to help keep all those layers secure as well as give a really nice look. We're ready to make the strap. You're going to join the pieces F, the strap pieces, by placing the short ends right sides together perpendicular to each other and overlapping the ends. Sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner. We do have three strap pieces. That allows you some flexibility for adjusting the length, shortening the loop a little bit. So you'll have two seams that you need to sew first. The instructions actually say, trim the excess seam allowance first. I prefer to finger press the seam open, top stitch on each side of the seam, and then trim my seam allowance to reduce the bulk. I find it just is a little faster for me to do it that way, but you can certainly trim the seam allowance first before adding the top stitching. Now before we do anything else, thread the strap through the o-rings. I find it helpful when threading the strap through the O-rings is to fold the bag as I would like with the O-rings at the near the corner seam or the um, side panel seam together and then do the same with the next pair and your the center of your side panel is going to kind of tuck in. And if it helps, you can always close the snap on the bag. And we'll go around again to the opposite end, pair those two O-rings up, slide the strap through. And it doesn't have to look pretty. We're just 
threading the strap through. Just make sure there are no twists in the strap. And I like to just use a sewing clip to clip my last two ends together to make sure I have them aligned correctly. And imagine my diagonal seam and then double check again. I would rather double check twice that I don't have any twist in the strap. Before sewing the final diagonal seam, if you wish, it's a great opportunity to check the length of the strap. If you need to shorten it, it's easy to do now. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew the last diagonal seam. And repeat the top stitching and trimming your seam allowance the same as you did before. All right, now we have our loop. It's threaded through the O-rings. So now with wrong sides together, fold the strap in half along the length. I'm just going to use sewing clips in a short section. That way I can pull the strap through as I'm sewing and I don't have to worry about pulling clips along with the strap through the O-rings. And then you're going to top stitch an eighth inch from each long side and you can thread or move the strap through the O-rings in a continuous manner. That way it makes it just maybe, hopefully, a little easier for you. Now we'll top stitch the remaining fold edge of the strap. Our strap is completed. We have one last fun detail to add, and that's the tassel. We're going to mark the piece P, that's our last piece of fabric left, on the wrong side. Mark a horizontal line down from the top, and then cut vertical lines spaced about a quarter inch apart, or an eighth inch if you prefer a finer fringe, up to that horizontal line. Then with wrong sides together, tightly wrap and glue piece P to itself and insert the tassel into the tassel cap hardware. And simply add the screw to hold all the layers in place. And you can attach your tassel to an O-ring. Congratulations, you have completed the Laura bag. I hope you enjoy using your Laura bag. In addition to the interesting patchwork, I really love the interior and exterior pockets. The strap is convertible. You can use it as a double shoulder strap or a crossbody strap. It's time to show off your accomplishments and I would love to see your renditions. We encourage you to share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Laura Pattern on social media. Thank you, Laura, for sharing and inspiring us. And thank you for watching and sewing with me through this series. Until our next tutorial, have a great making day. If you found this tutorial helpful or enjoyed the mystery bag sew along theme, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll always know when a new video is here.